Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So it's one plus seven T day. And what I mean by that is you can now buy this phone. So if you've been waiting for the one plus seven T to get here, I know it was announced weeks and weeks ago. It is now available. And uh, yeah, you can buy one. So should you buy one and it show up? Well, this is the video you need to watch. These are the first 10 things we think you should do with the one plus seven T. So the first thing we need to talk about here is security. Like with most of these first 10 things videos, we, we really sort of hammer that home that you need to secure your phone. And OnePlus gives you a couple ways to do that. There's face unlock, there's an in-display fingerprint reader. My suggestion is you use both of those. Um, if we flip this over, you'll see uh, in-display fingerprint reader. So just put your thumb on there, unlocks. But that camera was also scanning for my face. And to be honest, OnePlus's face unlock is really, really fast. I, I don't know how secure it is. It could be tricked with a photo or something. I, I don't know, but it's super fast. And so if you kind of combo the two, um, I think you'll get a really good experience. So to set this up, if you don't do this during your initial setup, you would go into settings and then we scroll down to security and lock screen. And then in here, you'll find a couple of things. Well, you have to set a screen lock. So pattern, password, pin, whatever you want to do there. And then we have fingerprint and face unlock. So uh, fingerprint, just kind of show you I've, I've got multiple fingers in here but if you want to add one it's uh it's pretty simple it walks you through the steps and you just put a finger on there and lift and press and lift and press and lift and press and uh you know it'll tell you to get to the edges and make sure you cover it up fully each time it actually takes a little bit of while a little bit of uh, a little bit of time and uh it's very sensitive it's not the quickest um these in display fingerprint readers can be a little finicky but either way you you guys get it you walk through that set up fingerprints and then you've got that now if you want to top that off i would say go back and we go into the face unlock stuff so i've already set my face up but i'll walk through it with you again so i'm going to go ahead and remove face data so if we add it it says use your face and fingerprint to unlock it's kind of saying what i just suggested set up both things so if we go ahead and hit next uh you put your face in this screen and uh it sort of starts scanning your face now as it's scanning your face it'll sort of to detect it with like these weird triangles and then when it's all done it says face data has been added you get the blue check mark and you click next and uh, then you're good. So now I have fingerprints and face data collected. So a couple of options uh, once you've done that, there's obviously face unlocking, turn it off or on right here. Auto unlock once the screen is on. So when your screen fires up, it, it'll just unlock everything and bypass your lock screen if you have this toggled on. Do you want it to do that? It's up to you. You may want to still leave it where you have to swipe up so it doesn't just jump into whatever you were last doing and maybe something embarrassing, I don't know. But so if you toggle that on, um, and you face unlock, it'll just jump right past your lock screen. So just be aware of that. Either way, so I've got both things set up now, right? I've got fingerprints, I've got face unlock. And, and so now you kind of decide what might be the best way to utilize those. So right now I have it set up, uh, the phone to where I tap it once and it wakes to this screen, which then lets me uh, scan my finger to get in. So the only thing with that is in that sort of state, this state right here, it's not gonna scan my face. Uh, you actually have to wake the phone to do that to at least this state and then it will start. You can see it up there, it's trying to scan my face. So you kind of need to decide, do you want it to be a single tap to get to here to use fingerprints? Do you want to always have to hit this button over here? Or if we actually go in here and go into buttons and gestures and quick gestures, there is a double tap to wake. So if you change that, well, number one, it gets rid of that single tap. You can see I can't wake it with a single tap, but I can double tap. And now I can either do fingerprint or face. So it's kind of up to you how you want to play that. Um, my, my thing has kind of been to flip between the two until I find one that I like. But if you're not getting what I'm, what I'm saying there, it's one tap and that kind of wakes the screen for a fingerprint lock, but won't do face. So you'd have to hit this button in order to do the face. If you do double tap, you can't do the single tap, but the double tap gets you into an area where you can fingerprint and face, if that, if, if that makes sense. So either way, face unlock, fingerprint, I, I would probably set both of those up. It's kind of the, the, best, of, uh, the best experience you'll get for uh, that convenient security. 
Now, while we're in this buttons and gestures area where I just took you to do the double tap to wake, let's let's talk about some other stuff in here. This is this is our, our sort of next thing to focus on. So up top, you have an alert slider uh, and it says silent, vibrate, ring. There's uh, a couple of settings in here. Like if you have it set to silent, you can still uh, have media volume on or off. It's up to you. In vibration, there isn't really anything you can adjust. They still want your alarms to ring through. And then when you're in ring, uh, you can, well, have your phone vibrate as well while it's ringing. Uh, what's this? referring to well this thing right here so this is your alert slider so OnePlus puts alert sliders in their phones um, and uh, as you adjust those you can see what each slide does so all the way down is to ring in the middle is to vibrate and up top is to silence so that's what these are all referencing kind of a cool little feature it's just easy to um, get your phone from ringing to vibrate to silent so in your pocket or not looking at your phone you can kind of figure out where you want to go here and quickly silence your phone. It's the thing Apple's done. They've had an on off switch basically, but uh, OnePlus for a number of years has added in um, an extra level in there from vibrate to uh, silent. So that's what the uh, alert slider is talking about up there. Um, the next thing I'm, well, I'm gonna skip navigation and gestures. We'll talk about that in a second, um, but quick gestures where I was for the double tap to wake. Some other stuff in here like flipping to mute. When you get a call come in, you just flip your phone over, put it down and it'll actually mute it. Um, there's a three finger screenshot gesture. So you just drag three fingers on your screen and actually take a screenshot for you, which is kind of a cool little handy thing. Um, Double tap to wake we talked about. These are kind of cool though. These draw O, V, S, and M. Uh, what those are referring to is on your lock screen, you can actually draw things. Um, like say to open the camera if I draw an O. And uh, so what it's talking about is when you're sitting in this state, uh, you can draw an O and it'll launch into the camera. So you notice I didn't press a button. I didn't wake the phone at all, but it's kind of waiting there for me to do something like that. Um, so gotta unlock that actually um, so just some things to to play with in there quick gestures buttons that sort of thing this is one I would definitely leave on quick to turn on camera and what it's saying is just double tap on the power button and that'll launch the camera it's probably the quickest way to always get into your camera so I would definitely leave that on this is another one you may want to play with where it's quick activate the assistant so you can actually hold your power button for well it says 0.5 seconds to activate the assistant and what it's talking about is your google assistant which you can just swipe up down here and get to or shout the you know keyword which I'm not going to do uh, but if you turn this on you just do this kind of half second press and it fires that up uh, and then finally we'll come back up here to navigation bar and gesture so one plus phone you have two options on the 7t you can go full navigation gestures which you can see i have on or you can do back home recents which is the old school three button android setup so one of the cool things about the three button setup is uh, you can customize it so you can customize what the buttons do uh, like long pressing on the home button that middle circle launches the assistant which is you know kind of what it's done forever um, but you can also do a double tap on that button and that could complete something else like turn your screen off or uh, open the shelf or you know whatever so you can you can customize these further um, and you can do that with the back and recents button as well like adjust their long presses double taps that sort of thing kind of a cool thing um that one plus has done for a while even though any gestures are kind of taking over the world um speaking of gestures so let's fire those up so one plus used to have a gesture system where you could swipe up from the middle of the phone to kind of go home or get into recents and then on the left and right side of that center area that was kind of your back gesture well that's gone now in android 10 with the 7t instead we have android 10's gestures and i don't want to go into whether or not they're great i did a whole video on why i think they're not but if you want to use them uh, this is kind of how they work. You swipe up here and hold, and that'll get you into your app switcher. You could just swipe up and let go, and that gets you home. Uh, again, swipe up and hold gets you into that app switcher. If I wanna go back, I swipe in from the left or right side of the screen. You can see that little motion, it's pointing an arrow there, see that? And it's taking me back. So to go back, that's all you do. You can swipe from either side, anywhere up and down the side panel, and again, you swipe up here and hold to get into your app switcher. If you wanna just go back to one recent app, um, you can actually slide along this bar down here at the bottom and it'll take you into what other other apps you have open. They're, they're not my favorite gestures, but they do work. And again, on this is this phone, this is kind of the only two options you have. I believe there's a two button Android navigation system buried in there and there's like an ADB command if you really wanna get wild with it, that'll enable that, completely up to you.
Moving right out of there, let's actually stay in settings, but we're gonna go back to display. So there's a whole bunch of display settings that OnePlus includes you should most definitely be familiar with. The first one is adaptive brightness. Adaptive brightness tries to kind of learn your brightness patterns or or positioning or favorites or whatever. And, and so as you adjust this throughout the day, it kind of learns from you and tries to optimize depending on light and you know, kind of what your what your settings tend to be. If if it's a little aggressive, and I found it to be quite aggressive on this phone, like I'm talking dragging the thing over to brighten it and watching it say, no, 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 we want to be darker right after I've done it, not okay. Um, you may want to turn that off. In fact, I had it off for a little while because it was a little crazy. Uh, screen calibration, this is where you decide sort of the color profile you prefer. I believe Vivid probably comes on out of the box. There's also a natural, which kind of tones everything down, or there's advanced where you can get really wild with it. And if you leave on AMOLED wide gamut, you can see here i'll just show you look at the difference between that it's a little bit wild you can also choose srgb uh, another couple of modes you can decide on the coolness and warmth of the display they give you some controls there but kind of get it you know set up the way you like it screen refresh rate important piece here so this phone sports a 90 hertz refresh rate that just means your experience is smoother as you use it, interact with it, check out content, that sort of thing. It is a little bit of a battery drain. So if you're having issues with battery and during my testing with this, I did not have issues with battery with 90 Hertz on, but if you are, you can turn it to 60 Hertz. If for some reason you don't like the smoothness, you can turn it back down to 60 Hertz, which is sort of the standard that almost every smartphone runs at. Uh, that's where that setting is, but it's one of the big selling features. You, you probably should leave that, leave that on um, in scenes. Uh, two things to point out, night mode, which is, uh, well, I'll show you, turns everything to sort of this amberish color. It's a blue light filter. It eases strain on your eyes. You can actually schedule this to come on. So I would say set up a schedule. Also, you'll find it in quick settings panel up here. It's this little moon shape and that turns it on as well. Uh, be familiar with that because it really does help at night. It's one of those things you should just use. Reading mode is something cool that OnePlus does. You actually turn your phone sort of into a grayscale or optimized for reading content. So if you read books or something like that on your phone or a lot of articles, maybe at night and you want to go into a reading mode, you can do that. Uh, there's a new feature with this one, which is this chromatic effect. So it kind of goes into a reading mode, but it keeps some colors active. So it might just be somewhat more of a pleasant experience than just gray. Um, but if you want just the gray, you could choose mono and that just goes full gray. So it's it's uh, it's one of those things. Um, there's also a shortcut to it, I believe up here, yep, reading mode. So in your quick settings panel, which we'll come back to, uh, it is up there in case you wanna to quickly toggle that off and on. Um, ambient display is, uh, well, we, we talked a little bit about this with the single tap or double tap when we were doing face unlock earlier. So here you can adjust some of those settings, also what you want to show on your lock screen or in your ambient display. It, you know, I wish there was an always on display with OnePlus phones. For whatever reason, OnePlus refuses to put an always on display. So you kind of have to tap, lift your phone, double tap. There's a lot of things you have to do in order to get information to show up. But this is where you would control some of those limited settings. Uh, that's pretty much it other than status bar. So, uh, excuse me. So status bar. Status bar, we're talking about the icons up here. So like that airplane mode or the silent or your battery percentage clock, that sort of thing. OnePlus actually lets you hide those icons. So there's some other stuff in here like your battery style and if you wanna show your battery percentage, but this thing right here, icon manager is one of my favorite things that OnePlus does. So like the NFC icon that often comes on out of the box, that really ugly N icon. Uh, here, I'll just turn it on so you can see it. That thing that you probably wondered what that was and some phones won't allow you to get rid of that. OnePlus lets you hide that. Um, you also, you'll notice with some carriers, uh, they might have a voice over Wi-Fi or voice over LTE icon that's really big and takes up space. We can turn those off. So you can turn off a lot of stuff. Um, so if there's an icon that's bugging you, they don't feel like you need to see at all times. That's exactly where you would find it. Backing up from here one screen, we're gonna actually go into this customization setting. So customization is an area that OnePlus lets you change the look of the, or the style of your phone a little bit in terms of software. So there's some preset themes in here you can go with. Uh, this is also where you would change your wallpaper. Uh, you can change your clock style if you're using that ambient display, you know, the tap to wake or lift to wake. Uh, and in here you can change the clock style as you see fit. Um, you can also change the fingerprint animation. So you can just tap these and it'll kind of give you a preview of what that might look like. Um, you can also change uh, system color. So you can change the accent color to like be green or maybe this weird brown. You can also fully customize it though. Um, and we're talking, you can use color codes if you want, but you can drag this thing around and 
if you get it off black, you can see you can really uh, kind of go wild with it. So uh, how about that? Sure. Um, you can change tones and by tones, they just mean a fully uh, white sort of UI, which I switched to to be able to customize some of this. There, this is also where you'll find your dark theme. So if I turn that on, everything should kind of go dark. Um, so that's what tone is. If you go with this version, it kind of is a mix of the two, but it doesn't really let you customize much. So not a huge fan of that. Uh, you can change icon shapes, so round, square, sort of weird teardrop shape, or this is sort of like a squircle. And then also, if you uh, if you have a, an icon pack that you might want to use, say a third party icon pack, this is where you'll find that. You can you can set those in there. And then finally, there's actually a font. So you can use Roboto or uh, OnePlus Slate. So a uh, little bit of customization there, kind of a cool little thing that OnePlus has added. Staying in settings though, we're actually gonna go into sound and vibration now. Lots of cool things to play with in here. Uh, obviously you have separate media controls, uh, I, sh I should say volume controls for ring media and alarms. Uh, you'll find your Dolby Atmos settings in here. Do not disturb is one of those things, sort of like the nightlight. I, I usually set it up out of the box and never touch it again, but, and you could really customize this to like, Pull, hold back on your alerts, not tell you in some things, notify you of other things. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff you can set in here, but really do not disturb is great for at night. Turning do not disturb on by schedule so that while your phone's sitting on your nightstand, it's not buzzing at you. Uh, lots of stuff in here, but again, sort of set it and forget it. Um, one of the things that OnePlus does really cool is that uh, they allow you to customize things like vibration, intensity, and pattern. So for your ringtone or your notifications, you can actually adjust vibrations like you can change the way they vibrate uh, and then you can also change the strength of them so you may want to do that just so it helps you tell the difference between ringing notification that sort of thing if you're like me who doesn't usually use sound much on his phone it's just kind of one of those things you can uh, you can adjust so uh that's mostly it i think in terms of sounds from there then let's uh let's actually scroll down here to utilities so utilities is kind of this area that one plus add some extra features that I'm not sure they know where to categorize into. Um, the only one I'm really gonna point out to you is scheduled power on and off. So if, if your phone, you feel like it needs to reboot regularly, maybe free up some RAM, that sort of thing, uh, you can actually schedule. So maybe at night you have a power off or maybe in the morning you have a power off and power back on. And it'll do it all, both of those on and back off. So. Uh, Keep that in mind, just one of those handy little features you don't see on very many phones. And from there, we're actually gonna go back to the home screen and play around a little bit. So up here, this quick settings area I mentioned earlier, uh, you should customize it. So what I like to tell everyone is at least customize the first six, because as you can see, when you swipe down, those are the first things that you see, and they're probably the ones you use the most. Like I toggle Wi-Fi off and on a lot, and my auto rotate, there's my do not disturb, my nightlight, my battery saver, so I can check on a battery percentage, and there's a flashlight. So in order to adjust those, you swipe this down one more, and you hit this little pencil button or pen button, and then in here, you just kind of grab things and drag them to wherever you want them, and that's how you organize them. You can hide things by dragging them, down here if you don't want them or if there's something down here you want up here you just drag and drop it you could have multiple pages of these as well it doesn't have to be just that one single page uh, but when you're done you just hit back and it sort of saves it and uh, now you have your favorite six so make sure you do that also if you swipe this down again you do have a brightness slider down here it's the quickest way to adjust brightness on the fly if that adaptive brightness is bugging you you can actually turn it off just by tapping right there and then this thing really will listen to you no matter where you put that brightness um, Again, really handy. Uh, as far as the home screen goes, there's not a lot to customize. This thing looks pretty familiar. Obviously, you swipe up to get into your app drawer. You can long press, and that'll let you edit the different pages you have set up. Uh, you can also change wallpapers from here, adjust widgets or add widgets if you want. And then there are some home settings that you may want to toggle. So add icon to home screen. Every time you install a new app from Google Play, if you have this toggled on, it'll add it to a home screen. If you don't want it to do that, just hit that. This swipe down option, I would most definitely leave on. Um, what that's talking about is if I'm in this state and I just swipe down, it'll pull my notification area down. So I don't have to reach all the way up here and swipe here. I could actually swipe as low as like down here and it'll bring that down. Uh, big screen, big tall screen, definitely leave that on. Um, anything else to look at in here? Um, this is your shelf off and on um, and also a double tap to lock. So I'll show you both of those. Uh, if I swipe up here, the shelf is talking about this right here. So 
OnePlus has created this. It's not really like a Google uh, app replacement or that side panel you'll see on Google's phones in the Pixel launcher. It's more of just kind of a, a utility area where there's shortcuts to like launching into a selfie, writing memos. You can see what uh, the weather is today and some of your recent apps. Uh, I usually turn it off, but you may want to customize. You can add widgets to it and things like that. Uh, the other thing, double tap to lock is just as it sounds, you double tap and that will actually lock your phone when you are on uh, the home screen. So that might come in handy. Um, again, that only works from the home screen, but it is an option. That's uh, pretty much it. You can also adjust some kind of customizations in your grids and layouts. Um, you can switch that icon pack, even though I showed you another place, you can do that. Uh, there's some other stuff in here. OnePlus does a nice job of kind of making uh, settings available no matter where you are. To wrap up then, let's just briefly talk about the camera. So double tap, that launches you right into the camera. So camera, you have obviously three cameras on this guy, three cameras. So uh, if you look down here at the bottom, this is how you kind of get between the three. So when you fire it up and you see that one X, that's this is your standard shooter. The one with the three trees is your ultra wide. And then this far one over here with the single tree is your two times or your telephoto. So by tapping between those, you're switching between the three cameras. You can see the, the different amounts of, uh, of image you can capture there. So that's kind of how you quickly toggle between those. You have some settings up top. Um, this little flower is actually how you get into the super macro mode. So we're talking, you can get this close to something. There's my finger, gross. Uh, it, this is one of the few phones on the planet that can take macro shots. And we're talking only a couple of centimeters away and it'll still pull focus and uh, take a shot. It's very, very cool. Uh, it's one of those things I used a whole bunch while I was reviewing this phone. So you can get really close to stuff, but it's that flower up there is how you get into super macro mode. Um, to change between panel, or I'm sorry, not panels, but uh, video modes, or I should say camera modes, like you can see video over here, portrait, you actually just swipe on the screen and that will take you in between those. Um, you can also tap on each of these things like to get over to nightscape, nightscape being the, the nighttime or dark situation mode. Uh, but you can just swipe on the panel left to right and that will take you between those as well. You can actually swipe up on this bottom area and that brings you to more modes. You'll see pro mode is in there, panorama, time lapse, and this is actually where you get into settings. So ultra wide lens correction, ultra wide cameras tend to kind of warp things. And this is gonna try to uh, force correct that, you turn that off if you think it's doing a bad job. This is where you'll find your location data stored on photos. If you don't want that being saved, you can turn that off there. This is where you'll find a couple of different grid options, which I feel like most people should turn on as a grid. Uh, you can even do a tripod long exposure for those nightscapes to maybe capture some stars. I don't really know. Uh, histogram and promo, that sort of thing. You'll find some extra settings in here. Uh, there's your selfie button. There is your preview button. That's pretty much it. Uh, the camera is, uh, it's a pretty good one. I think it's OnePlus's best so far. So lots to go over there. I know this video was long, but uh, good phone. Lots of cool stuff that you want to tweak to make sure uh, you get the best experience. If you have comments, questions, let us know. We are Droid Life. Peace.